Fire Station. Hey, uh, hey, hey. My name is Ben, and yours <laughs> is Josh. <laughs> Josh with a normal sound. <laughs> Uh, and today and we're going to talk about your topic. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm. This is a another episode where we're going to be. We don't have a lot of scientific data or, or actual data to be, to back up any of our claims. We are literally talking this from our own perspective of what yeah. we think. Why and how the di the, di the differences and similarities between classic games, classic console and computer games, and VR games. And not, Where, not, not specifically retro games. No, no. Just, like just, even games that came just, out like this yeah, year. Console, yeah. Just classic console games that are out right now versus VR games. With the similarities, differences, and basically trying to, trying to discuss why the adoption of VR is not where the companies thought it would be. Yeah. That, that we are not seeing the pickup of VR. The purchasing is there. But the adoption of, of the, the daily use, it's it's not there. Not what they thought was going to happen. Not yeah. the time frame they thought was going to happen. But yeah, so, I mean, it, it'll come, but it's yeah. not. it hasn't happened like yeah. overnight like computers, right? I, I do want to call out Meta slash Facebook and their approach to the VR because they have been the biggest proponent of VR in the last three years with Oculus. Yeah. And and the, the, the adoption of home use, right? And I the mean, Quest. The, yeah, 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 that's what I mean. The Quest has has opened up the home market significantly. Well, being as cheap as it is, honestly, yes. seeing that price shocked me. When I yeah. saw it online, I went, "There's no way that's that exp or that cheap." Yeah, right. Because all of the other headsets were all thousands of dollars before this, and now the Meta Quest came out, and it was what two ninety nine, three ninety nine. Yeah, that's ridiculously so, so cheap. And again, I'm I'm coming from an anecdotal standpoint of working at the arcade and getting to talk to our customers. Yeah, and I'm going to say. The vast, vast majority of people who own their own VR headset, who have come in here and told me, and I know this, do not play it on a regular basis at home. The kids don't touch it anymore. Yeah. It, it was a novelty that wore off somehow. Yet they're still coming to the arcade. So it's not, and this is where I'm trying, this is why I'm curious, is that what is it about a classic console game like Call of Duty, like the new, you know, whatever the new Call of Duty is or, or Fortnite or whatever that might be. Yeah. What is it about those experiences that still are dominating the gaming industry. What is it? Yeah, that's it's it's a great question because it really doesn't have an actual full answer. Like it no, really well, doesn't. I don't, I don't think one answer. It's, no. It's it's um it's multiple stuff, but it's um yeah, classic games are just they're easy to pick up. They're easy to put down. You can you can do it while sitting. You don't have to move. There's no energy required to do them. Mm -hmm. Um so when I pick up and play a game, I can sit down and just go click, click, done, and the game's open, and now I can just play. Whereas with the VR headset, I gotta put my headset on, it's the, the controllers, and then I gotta launch the game, and sometimes it takes a bit because the headsets aren't as powerful as, P as uh, personal computers and uh, consoles and all of that stuff. So that's a big thing is, is um, there's that theory. Uh, basically, if you put something too far away and make it harder to access, your body will want to do it less. There was a guy who made a theory of uh, his guitar. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you take that guitar and you put it in a locker with a, with, a, with, a, with a case, you're probably going to play it very little because your brain goes, it's going to take too long to get it. Even okay. if it's only like 10 seconds longer. Mm. But instead, if you... Same example as TV. So... If you want to watch TV, you just go click, click, done, it's open, done. But this guy did this instead. So the guitar was in his locker, and he took the locker out, put it right next to his, his, uh, his couch, and he took the batteries out of his controller for the TV every time he finished watching TV. So he made it harder for him to start watching TV okay, and easier okay, to play okay. guitar. Okay. So he ended up playing more guitar and watching less TV. Okay. So, so it's of, the same instead idea. Of, instead of removing the barriers to entry for something like VR, which yeah. requires more of a setup, instead of removing the, trying to find a way to remove those barriers, like, you know, just plugging VR into your brain. Uh, <laughs> you that add, would be weird. You, instead of you add barriers to the other industries, to the other activities that you would do to try to discourage you from going that way. That's yeah. an interesting one. I never thought of it. That's an interesting one. 
Mm-hmm. Now that's a very that's a very specific use case he did, obviously. Yeah. Um, but when we look at when we look at VR, especially kids, right? So we know the, the the data is out there to show that kids are not as physically active as they were 20 years ago, yeah. 10 years ago, and that video gaming is responsible is largely responsible for it. The idea that you can sit down and play your game and get it instantly. It's easier to access. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and as much as the proponent for VR is this is exercise you don't even know you're getting, is that enough to, sh- to, to, sh- like to, scare, to scare those people away, to scare these kids away of saying they know they're getting physical exercise, therefore they don't want to do it. They would rather sit idle playing their game rather than be active playing game. Is that is it that simple that the VR manufacturers got it wrong? I also think um, another part of this is that uh, VR games are less in depth mm. than P- than personal computer yes, games, than yes. PC games. Yeah. Uh, they're just so much easier to play. Like they're just they're just easier in general. Yeah. The more complex games that I play personally, like Into the Radius, that is an incredibly dif- difficult and in depth game where you have to like put each bullet in each magazine, clean your gun, make sure it's working correctly. Yeah. There's a lot of like management, yeah, and it's it's very interesting to me because it takes a long time for just just to sort stuff. Yeah, right. Now, how much cooler would a game like Satisfactory be in VR? Mm, yes, that right? would be really cool. Actually, exactly, right. <laughs> you could you could say this is a class. This is a great PC game that works really well for PC, but actually, this game would do far better in VR. Mm, it could I, I think actually. It could, I think it would do so much better in VR. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So so there's yeah so. You know, for the for the future, I guess of where we're looking to the VR, the, you know, the VR developers. Okay, is it on the developers? Is it on the manufacturers to try to increase the adoption? Who's it on? Right? Facebook I took it on like their it's... Facebook took it on themselves. Saying, yeah. We need to make a more affordable headset. We need to be the first option for super affordable, high quality headset. And they and, did, it. and that's that's a fantastic step. But they should have stopped there. Yeah. At least until developers got more into the idea of creating these games. So, because yeah. really, it's it's on all of them. They all need to do it at the same time. That's yeah. how it works with PC, how it works with consoles. It's how it works with gaming in general. If you go into uh, virtual reality, all of the things need to be there for people to want it. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at if you look at the adoption of if you look at the adoption of like say like TVs, mm-hmm. just home TVs. I can probably guarantee that it didn't. It didn't start when TV content was. It didn't. It didn't start without the content being there in the first place, right? Correct. People had to say, "There's got to be enough of a reason for me to get this well, before I actually make this investment." So when you look at yeah, when you look at VR, it kind of was backwards, right? The, the headsets came out first. Yeah, and the content and the was the content's after. just still not quite it was, there. It was still it's still coming out now, but the con- the gr- the really good content that we're seeing five years, six years down the road yeah. now, it was not there. See, and, so and you what's didn't crazy have to any me, of the pick up there. I, I'm a World of Warcraft player. Yeah. So if if a game like World of Warcraft existed on virtual reality, I, I would be playing that every day. Not even kidding. Yeah. Like that is that would be amazingly perfect for me. Like I. I it would, yeah. it would instantly get me into that scene, and I would never leave it. Yeah. I don't do that because there's no games that are like it. Yeah. So, so the, they, the genre is missing a lot of things right now, still. As as great as I think it is, it's still just, it's it's close. Yeah. It needs a couple more things. Now, we've got some that are coming out and, and all of this stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, like you said, if... Almost, you can look at the VR manufacturers, they would have been smart to not create new content, but to rehash old content that people already knew. That if you want to build an adoption, you got to get them something they're familiar with. Fruit Ninja. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Fruit Ninja, <laughs> Fruit Ninja was, an incredible, it was an incredible addition to VR. Because, yeah, it was yes. a mobile game that turned into, I'm yeah, actually yeah. holding katanas. And, so we, we, and we get to see it firsthand here that if you want to get someone to buy in, you put them to something they know. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Give them something they know in a new format they're not Half-life. used to. Half-Life. Yeah, Half Life yeah. Alex. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, a perfect yeah. addition. So, so you know, for for the VR, for the manufacturers out there, for the developers out there, I mean, our advice is going to be: if you want to increase the adoption, you got to give them something they know, give them something they're used to, and yeah. then then you can give them the new stuff after. Imagine a Call of Duty in VR. Anyways, <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. The full form. Yeah, the full I form. Agree. Yeah. 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 
Uh, cool. Well, this is uh, this has been a great second season. Mm -hmm. I, I've been really. I've really enjoyed this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, we've we've gone a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole, but VR and, and talked a little bit, you know, kind of both sides, but the, the pros and the cons. And, yeah. And looking at those, you know, fairly. Um, yeah. So if uh, if you're looking to book a session at your local Control V, check out controlvarcade.com. If you're interested in opening up uh, your own business and going to business for yourself with Control V, head over to virtualityfranchise.com. And if you just wanted to shoot us a question, chat with us, have any new ideas for episodes, uh, send us an email. I love VR at controlvrk.com. I've been Josh. And I am Ben. And Ben. ben. You have, uh, I said I've been Josh. I've, I. You are Ben. I have been. And this is the conversation. I <laughs> we'll see you next season. See you next season.